Welcome to Tea with Our Ping. Over the past two weeks, many people's eyes were glued to the TV screens watching the Tokyo Olympics with enthusiasm and passion. This was particularly true for the 1.4 billion Chinese people. After all, sports are a nationalized state-run project modeled after the rigid Soviet-style regime. The entire nation or all taxpayers are funding these elite athletes, winning at all costs. Both human and financial is a goal. Such a system has indeed produced many gold medals at major international competitions, second most at the Tokyo Olympics. These glamorous medals can certainly help build national pride or nationalism, something the Communist Party needs badly these days to divert quite a few domestic headaches, such as the recent deadly floods and the return of the Wuhan virus in many parts of China. Yet, good things when going to extreme can backfire too. The pressure and expectations placed on the Chinese athletes can be enormous. CNN reports South Korean plans to pursue a formal complaint in response to a Chinese Olympian who was heard repeatedly swearing during a badminton match between the two countries. Chen Qingchen, 24, could be heard shouting the F word in Mandarin throughout the live televised broadcast of her women's doubles match against South Korea. Later, she recognized that her language was offensive to some, so she posted on her blog that I will adjust my pronunciation. What's amazing is perhaps the one-sided support she received from the tightly censored Chinese internet. Another awkward moment happened when China's TV network prematurely reported that its Chinese pair won the mixed doubles final in table tennis before the game wasn't even over. Apparently, Japan stunned their Chinese opponents by coming back from two sides down to win 4-2-3, clinching the final set and the gold medal. This loss ends China's dominance in table tennis at the Olympics, and is widely regarded as a humiliation by the Chinese press. In another report, Taiwan needed just 34 minutes to make Olympic history in badminton, dominating China in the men's doubles final to become the first unseeded team to win the gold medal. China's TV network refused to broadcast the medal ceremony. The authorities and some fans consider the silver medal a disgrace because of the loss to Taiwan. Rational netizens, however, find such nationalism incompatible with the Chinese tradition of good manners. These days, Chinese authorities are apparently not following Chairman Mao's sports doctrine. Friendship first, competition second. Speaking of Chairman Mao, this former supreme leader made an unscheduled appearance at the Tokyo Olympics after winning the women's sprint in track cycling. Bao Shanju and Zhong Tianshi won pin badges of Mao at their medal ceremony. This has caused a stir both in Tokyo and at home in China. The International Olympic Committee IOC sought an explanation from China as it was a breach of Rule 50 of the Olympic Charter that prohibits political paraphernalia on the podium. Later, Christian Klau, an IOC official, told the press, we have received a clarification from China and the athletes have been warned. We have also received assurances it will not happen again, and with this, the IOC considers this case closed. Radio Free Asia reports last month the IOC relaxed Rule 50 banning political displays to allow gestures like taking the knee on the field or play but the athletes are still banned from making political gestures while on the podium. As a matter of fact, this isn't the first time the Chinese athletes wore Chairman Mao's badges at the Olympic Games. According to a Chinese media report, at the 2000 Sydney Olympics, Chinese table tennis player Kong Linghui wore it at the final match. In the 2008 Beijing Olympics, Chinese badminton player Lin Dan also wore it during the match. Back then, Wearing Mao's badge didn't cause any stir, nor did it attract any international attention. Yet, this time around, Mao's unexpected appearance at the Tokyo Olympics has become a grave concern, not just for the IOC, but most significantly for folks back in China, especially for the Communist Party. It's unclear at this point whether these Chinese athletes want Mao's badges to show loyalty to the Communist Party, or simply for good luck.
At least weightlifter Shi Zhiyong credited the Communist Party for his gold medal. The Global Times, one of the Chinese Communist Party's English newspapers, initially tweeted a photo of these two athletes wearing mouse badges, but later deleted it. Chinese state-run media outlets all of a sudden edited out mouse badges from the chest of these two athletes in their photo reports. Apparently, the current photos in the Chinese media have all been digitally altered. What happened, you might ask? Chairman Mao's badges were once upon a time a must-have accessories to display loyalty before his death in 1976. Those badges have since become collector's items, with a resurgence in popularity under the party leader Xi Jinping. In many ways, these badges have continued to serve as a reminder of the personality cult around Mao and his controversial legacy, including the Cultural Revolution. We need to look at this matter from both the current Communist Party's perspective and that of the masses. In the Communist Party's view, loyalty to the party comes first. As part of the Cultural Revolution generation, President Xi and his Communist colleagues are too familiar with that turbulent era. Many long-time China watchers find that the way President Xi runs China and his party these days resembles much of what Chairman Mao once did top-down dictatorship with absolute power. In fact, President Xi was the only man who appeared on Tiananmen Square in a gray mouse jacket at the recent CCP's 100th anniversary ceremony. Everyone else was in Western shoes with a tie. Apparently, Xi is following Chairman Mao's footsteps to build his own personality cult. It's no secret that President Xi wants to become a Mao-style leader himself, and for people to worship him not the dead Chairman Mao from the past. It's fair to say that Chinese people are now divided regarding Mao's legacy. Most of the Chinese people, including members of the Communist Party, have been adversely affected by Mao's Cultural Revolution and other political campaigns. Scholars estimate that some 60 to 80 million Chinese people died under Mao's rule, making him one of the top three murderers, along with Hitler and Stalin, in the world's history. Yet these days, social justice, rampant corruption, disparity, and the huge income gap between the party elite and the vast working class have produced a strong sentiment among many to seek equality and a fair distribution of wealth. Some people believe that under Mao's time, there was greater equality as the gap between the poor and the rich was much smaller than that of today. Mao's recent popularity also arise from the widespread complaints that the ordinary Chinese gained too little from the wrenching economic changes that caused inflation and massive layoffs at state-owned companies. As Premier Li Keqiang admitted last year, there are now 600 million Chinese making $140 per month. Faced with tough competition, young people in particular have become increasingly hopeless to be financially independent. In an atheist communist society, turning to Mao for spiritual or even moral help has proven to be safe and more widely accepted in recent years. These days, nationalism and the patriotic flame as a result of the Tokyo Olympics are fully used by the Communist Party to resist Western influence. In the extreme case, as shown in a Radio Free Asia video report, a man from Xinjiang of Henan province, one of the worst flooded regions, was kneeling on the ground in the rain, begging and praying to Chairman Mao to move the local typhoon and thunderstorms to the United States. Now you see what a communist education can do to an everyday man. A bit crazy? Well, just imagine a few decades ago, everyone was actually wearing Mao's badge in China. A pop star Chris Wu was recently put in police custody for the charge of rape. But his 500 million fans begged to differ and plotted a prison break on the internet to rescue him. This has scared the daylights out of the Communist Party. Accordingly, the Chinese authorities are shutting down 1,300 online fan clubs and disabled 4,000 online accounts and removed more than 150,000 toxic remarks. In a recent crackdown against unhealthy celebrity fan culture, 
though in the Chinese version of TikTok has removed 2.4 million so-called abusive comments and nearly 8,000 videos by celebrity fans since June. There's a Chinese saying, he who rides a tiger is afraid to dismount. As the Communist Party is now becoming aware that nationalism can be such a tiger, if not handled well, nationalism can backfire too. Apparently, President Xi likes Mao-style control, but he wants the public to worship only one communist leader at a time. That is himself. So Chairman Mao has to go, including his badges. This day is in the face of draconian censorship and anti-Western campaigns. A lot of Chinese people are worrying about the potential return of another cultural revolution. When Beijing promised the IOC that Mao's badge will not show up again at the Olympics, I believe they meant it. After all, Beijing didn't promise its athletes to not wear President Xi's badges in the future. For this sort of personality cult culture, the English philosopher Francis Bacon has some good advice. It's impossible to love and be wise. The great Chinese thinker Confucius holds, humility is the solid foundation of all virtues. So, why isn't the Communist Party encouraging everyone to wear a pin badge of Confucius, perhaps the most deserving man? With that, let's have a tea break. Today, I'm going to try Robin's organic oolong tea from the high mountains of Taiwan. Hmm, very smooth indeed. Until next time, peace and tea be with you.